it's just interesting to me how in one generation we went from laughing with our idols to laughing at our idols. Suddenly, she's a terrible singer and doesn't deserve to be a K-pop idol. Oh. Hi, welcome to an episode of K-pop Investigations. I'm your super legit journalist, Angelina, and basically this is a series where I take a specific subject and do a little bit of a deep dive into it. And then at the end, I share with you my super scientific results. In today's episode, we are going to be tackling the subject of TWICE's live singing, notably these criticisms that have particularly been targeted towards Momo. Recently on an episode of Show Champion, they did an encore for their song More and More, and no backup track was there to support them, and a lot of people were quick to point out some of the flaws within their vocals, expressing that they sound quite different without a backup track to support them. So as your favorite annoying second-gen stan slash professional K-pop boomer, I thought I would be the perfect person to tackle such a subject. So grab some popcorn. Actually, I'm going to stop you right there to remind you to subscribe to this channel, because quite frankly, it's a little rude to continue consuming my content without at least leaving a comment. I see the view to comment ratio, there is something fishy going on in this platform, but you didn't hear that from me. <laughs> okay, so let's reiterate really what people have been discussing a lot the past few days. So again, there is this clip from show champion 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 there is this clip from show champion going around and it really shows twice as raw live vocals and i'm just gonna add really quickly like i appreciate that i appreciate live vocals whether they are terrible whether they are not audibly pleasing <laughs> but anyways this clip features absolutely zero backup track <laughs> and twice are singing on these handheld mics and a lot of people have been pointing out that a lot of members of twice simply are not strong when it comes to vocals and this clip kind of solidifies that however a lot of people are pointing to momo specifically because really that's the main conversation point of this topic she's seen doing her part and it does sound a little bit off and then she almost seems surprised at the end of her part she then turns to Nyon and almost seems as if they're kind of laughing about it or confused about it. It's not 100% clear. So let's take a look at this clip quickly. <laughs> Under 5 seconds to avoid copyright claims. Because fun fact, YouTube won't give me my play button because I have two unresolved copyright claims, which makes absolutely no sense because I've seen plenty of people with play buttons who have a ton of copyright claims. But I was told by YouTube to not compare myself to other people, but it's weird when my channel is held to a different standard but I what the fuck do I know you are gonna be mine again. You're gonna say more. so yes like I'm not gonna sugarcoat it she sounds off does it sound authentic a hundred percent and I appreciate that but of course it does sound off and in this wonderful world of k-pop that demands constant perfection it is you know quote-unquote issue and that actually is a point that I want to touch on this video but a little bit later but for now I want to talk about this phenomenon in K-pop that seems to prioritize uniqueness over being technically good at something so no her voice is not perfect however it is incredibly unique and there is no denying that it is absolutely a very recognizable voice within twice but of course there are a lot of people who are saying that after five years that twice's vocals should be up to a different standard by now and that it's not acceptable to have such subpar vocals but also i do kind of think that this is the company's intentions sometimes sometimes having a technically good voice is just not enough especially in an industry saturated with people who have trained for years and years and years with people who are technically good at a lot of different aspects of their art and their craft so let's illustrate this with some examples starting <laughs> with the second gen example so we all know yg is super super guilty of this if we look at bomb's voice now i think she has an amazing voice but from a technical point of view i've heard through the grapevine that it's actually not good she doesn't have enough breath support and that's where i'm gonna stop with the critiques because i'm actually talking out of my ass i'm not a vocal coach but i have seen a lot of videos that kind of criticize her voice or just talk about 
where she's lacking when it comes to her vocal technique. So though I think her voice is absolutely stunning from a technical point of view, there are some critiques to be had. Which brings up the question, if her voice is technically not good, which is definitely a point I would have fought you to the death 10 years ago on, then how did she make it into this K-pop industry? The answer is, it's this distinctive factor when it comes to vocals. Her voice is very distinct, it's very unique, it's very recognizable. When you listen to a 21 song, there is no doubt that she's the one singing when it's her part, and it's, it's very recognizable. But she also has amazing stage presence and knows how to bring emotions into that voice, but that's a topic for another video. But alas, let's move on to example number two, and that is Rosé from Black. Pink. If you're in the Blackpink fandom, then you know that her vocals have definitely changed since pre-debut. There's this whole theory that YG has kind of forced her to take on this kind of higher pitched voice because it sounds more unique, it sounds more interesting. Because if you look at pre-debut clips of her singing, her voice is a lot more grave. What's the fucking word? Her voice is a lot deeper. Now whether she's technically good or not is something I can't speak on. I've definitely heard a lot of people say that she's ruining her voice, but then a lot of people are like, well, no, that's not true, like her voice is fine. Either way, there is absolutely no denying that there's this element of distinctivity when it comes to her vocals. Breaking out of this to start sound. And sometimes that's a really good factor to have within a group because it effectively helps the group stand out. And I believe this is the case for Momo as well and her vocals because as it's been pointed out by a lot of fans, her voice seems to have changed from pre-debut until now as well. People have been claiming that JYP is kind of forcing her to sing in this more nasally high-pitched voice because it sounds cuter, it sounds more unique. And if you look at some clips from 16, which is a reality show that created Twice, you will definitely see a difference. Take you know, Momo before had, you know, a, a nice sounding voice, but Momo now has a voice that <laughs> resonates in your ears. <laughs> and I think that was the goal. So yeah, maybe she's not technically good, but she definitely has that unique factor. And whether you appreciate that or not, there's no denying that when her part comes on, you recognize it and you know that it's her. Now the second thing I wanted to touch on in this video is perfectionism when it comes to K-pop. So before we get started, I did want to point out that, you know, criticism towards someone's voice is absolutely valid. I'm not knocking anyone who thinks that improvement is necessary because improvement should always be welcome. You should always want to improve yourself no matter what in every single aspect of your life. But this is more of a commentary on you know, the more extreme examples of this type of criticism that maybe is not really criticism anymore is more hate. This is something that I touch on quite often in my videos, but this is a conversation that we've had before when I uploaded my video about Leah's quote unquote lazy dancing. It is of my opinion that this new generation of K-pop is way too obsessed with perfection. And it is through our absolute obsession with perfection that we create these scenarios for our idols that really aren't the most ideal for them. Because the moment an idol messes up and doesn't fit, you know, our notion of what we thought perfection was, it becomes a huge scandal. And again, let's illustrate this with examples. So back in the day, you know, idols messed up all the time. Things were a lot more alive, a lot more raw, a lot more potential for mistakes. And these days you'll see, like, we created these very scenarios for these idols because we wanted to point out these mistakes. But back then they didn't care. And if you messed up, it would end up in this fun little compilation. Compilation of insert idol here having voice cracks in their performances because, you know, it happens. And people would like love and support their idols anyways. It would never become such a big thing. It would never be this idol isn't talented. This idol is lazy. It would never be anything like that. It would just be like a fun thing to look on and laugh at with your idols. I mean, she messed up. Like she literally messed up. She made a mistake and she looks surprised after she made the mistake. And then she turns over to Nan after and looks like they're laughing about it or kind of, I don't even know, like it's hard to tell. 
And it could have ended at that. It could have ended at that. It was just a mistake. Ended up in some funny compilation, but no. <laughs> Suddenly, she's a terrible singer and doesn't deserve to be a K-pop idol. It's just interesting to me how in one generation, we went from laughing with our idols to laughing at our idols. Because now it seems like the minute an idol messes up, it's just game over. And for this point in particular, I did want to kind of add that we tend to be a lot harsher on female idols. I mean, when's the last time you saw a male idol being accused of lazy dancing or being accused of having a terrible voice and not meriting their place within the K-pop world? I can't think of it, <laughs> but if you can, leave it down in the comments below. And I can assure you there are plenty of male idols that if they were in the same exact situation, might have sounded quite similar, might have been off tune or off key, I don't know. But you know what? If they were, we would still love them and it would still be okay because people make mistakes. Not everyone is perfect all the time. And you can kind of try to fake this and make people believe you're perfect all the time, but it's gonna come out every once in a while. And I just don't think we should be so quick to demonize that. And I also don't think we should be so much harsher to demonize our female idols. And it's also like we're acting like twice never use backup vocals. Like everyone in K-pop doesn't use backup vocals. Everyone does. Yes, even Mamamoo use backup vocals. It's just, it's just how K-pop is. Even in second gen, they used backup vocals, not to the same extent, but they still did. When you're singing and dancing, and might I add, dancing a really difficult choreography, it is absolutely impossible to expect someone to maintain perfectly stable vocals. Like, I'm no vocal coach, I'm no vocal expert, but you know, I've dabbed into linguistics a little bit, and it seems there are some similarities. <laughs> and the similarity being that you need air to make noise. And if you want more of my thoughts on that, you can check out my video of K-pop lip singing versus live vocals. But only after you're done with this video. <laughs> Don't fuck with my watch time. Performances lie within the experience itself, kind of how they bring you to different worlds, certain emotions through their performances. And that again is also kind of the beauty within K-pop. You have groups of people who excel in so many different things. One member might excel more in vocals, one member might excel more in rapping, one member might excel more in dancing, and from what I know, Momo <laughs> is the dancer of the group. And there are so many different kinds of K-pop groups. There are K-pop groups that are more vocally based, like Mamamoo. There are groups that are more performance based, like ATs. There are groups that are more dance based, like TXT or TWICE. I will just add, like, it's no wonder K-pop idols have such loud backup tracks because can you imagine the level of, of backlash that they would get if they didn't? And you know, it does bring up a lot of different questions. Like if you are an industry that demands perfection, do you actually need to be like always having a backup track there to support you? Where do we actually draw the line with what is acceptable and what isn't? Okay, so I asked you guys on my community tab what your thoughts were for the criticisms that she's received for her vocals on Show Champion. So let's read some of the top comments. Momo had really great vocals during Yes or Yes, Fancy, and Feel Special eras because it was in her range. Her part in More and More were constant and phrased C5, which is high. She's actually trying very hard, and you can see that she was disappointed in herself. In the second encore, it was a little better, but still needs work. I was sad because you can see that she was very worried and tense and was practicing before the actual encore. I wish JYP don't give her very hard parts again. It's kind of sad JYP is insisting on teaching and training this awful technique for her. Momo wasn't a great vocalist during Twice Early Days, but she was far superior during 16 to Cheer Up era than anything following TT. If JYP is going to promote her as a vocalist instead of a rapper, he should properly train her. We all know she is a great dancer, but she is really lacking in vocals. I don't mind the constructive criticism on how to improve. However, some are being extremely rude and turning into malicious comments about Momo. Remember, it's these types of comments that can hurt someone's mental health. Looked like even she was surprised by the sound that came out of her mouth. We can see Momo standing with her head down after her line and looking at Nyon like, 
what did I just do? But here's the deal. She trains dance as a main dancer, a lot more than her vocals, and after five years since debut, she should sound better. Momo needs a little more vocal training, and that's it. She delivers a choreo like no one else, and although it's her main job, singing is also part of the role she's got to play on stage as a TWICE member. So yeah, this is basically where we're going to end the video. I would love to know what you think. Do you think all idols need to excel in every aspect of K-pop, from singing to rapping to dancing? Because if an idol doesn't know how to rap, it seems like it's a lot more acceptable. But then if they're not the best at singing, it doesn't seem to be accepted in the same way. Do you think it's okay to be in this industry and have flaws and lack in certain areas? Do you think people expect too much from K-pop idols, especially female K-pop idols. I mean, not to bring Mingi into this again, but like, <laughs> I literally showed a clip of him having like a voice crack and his members smiled and kind of laughed it off. Like it was just like a funny little thing. But then when Momo messes up, it's like, oh no. She, she just doesn't deserve a spot in the K-pop world. So thank you so much for watching and an extra huge thank you to my channel members who help sustain this channel in a different way. If you made it this far, you might as well click on another one of my videos. I don't know. Help my algorithm before I inevitably go down in flames. And I do want to take a little minute to talk about something. So the fight for the Black Lives Matter movement is not over we still we still need to keep the momentum we still need to keep the same energy so i have included different links in the description and i'm also going to pin the same things in the pin comment just a friendly little reminder that though there have been a lot of changes implemented a lot of things that have happened that are really good for the movement that there are still so many more things that need to be accomplished a lot of structural things that need to change so yes, if you have money, please donate it. If you have time, donate your time. But also, it's like really important to educate yourself on the issue. Like, just educate yourself on privilege, on, on racism, on things that make you uncomfortable. If you are not uncomfortable, then maybe you're not doing enough introspection. I don't know. So yeah, that is it for me. I will see you guys next time. Bye!